A former aide to New York Governor Andrew Cuomo that accused the governor of groping her and fondling her breast has filed a criminal complaint with the Albany County Sheriff's Office. In the allegation, if the allegations are substantiated, the governor could be arrested. I can tell you that attorney Brian Primo and his client did in fact come in. She filed a formal report alleging criminal conduct against the governor. The conduct was sexual in nature. The meeting at that point commences the investigative process for the Albany County Sheriff's Office. Is this the kind of case that could lead to an arrest? It would be very premature for me to answer that regarding questioning him, but obviously, yes, it could lead to an arrest. And if so, Sheriff, would that be your agency in charge of affecting that arrest? Would our agency be affecting that arrest? Absolutely. The former Cuomo aide, Brittany Camiso, addressed the criminal complaint publicly on CBS. Here's some of what she had to say. Why did you file that criminal complaint with the Sheriff's Office? It was the right thing to do. The governor needs to be held accountable. And just so I'm clear again, mm -hmm. being held accountable to you mm -hmm. means seeing the governor charged with a crime. What he did to me was a crime. He broke the law. These were hugs with the intention of getting some personal sexual satisfaction out of. Then they started to be hugs with kisses on the cheek. And then there was at one point a hug, and then when he went to go kiss me on the cheek, he quickly turned his head and he kissed me on the lips. What did you say? I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything this whole time. People don't understand that this is the governor of the state of New York. There are troopers that are outside of the mansion. They are not there to protect me. They are there to protect him. Meanwhile, a top aide to Governor Cuomo is resigning from her position. She released a statement following her resignation, saying in part, quote, I am forever grateful for the opportunity to have worked with such talented and committed colleagues on behalf of our state, unquote. Journalist, co-founder of Inquire More and great friend of the show, journalist Zed Jelani, joins us now to weigh in. Uh, Zed, what do you make of uh, DeRosa's re resignation? Is, is you know, is, is this writing on the wall that this is over for Cuomo? Yeah, it could be. I mean, I think people who follow this know DeRosa as someone who's like fiercely loyal to Cuomo, is quite aggressive on behalf of him. Uh, if she's departing, it does kind of send a signal or a sign. Uh, I also think that what uh, we just played here in terms of a criminal complaint being filed and the sheriff kind of, um, you know, indicating that this is going to follow a normal kind of legal or policing process. Uh, there is actually a possibility that uh, Governor Cuomo could be arrested and prosecuted. I mean, this 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 is this is a serious territory for Cuomo, someone who I think believed himself to be basically invincible when it comes to this issue, and his family has certainly been heralded in New York as almost royalty. Um, for those who think it's not possible that he would be prosecuted, I would point you uh, to examples like Rod Blagojevich, you know, who's governor of Illinois, who was prosecuted. Uh, Bob McDonald was prosecuted, was later dropped. But, you know, it is it is something that can happen even to a high official in this case. And, you know, what's, what's interesting is I think they I don't think we mentioned it yet, but David Suarez, who was the um, prosecutor, the D.A. for Albany, was asked about this. And. You know, he didn't he didn't shoot it down. He was sort of like, yeah, we're, we're going to the sheriff has done that. And we, we maybe end up taking a look at it, basically. Um, so, yeah, I do think if I was in Cuomo, I would feel I'd feel be feeling the heat now. And I think another another uh, relevant fact is that actually, when you look at polling on Cuomo now, he actually has lost the support of the majority of his party, which I don't think was the case before. Um, but it was the case in the past couple of weeks. So it is it is definitely a tougher moment for him. And it may, it may signal. Um, you know, greater consequence. Well, and Zed, let me ask you, what, what's your notion? What do you think the governor is going to do in terms of the impeachment? Is he going to see it through and fight this out? Do you think that there's enough mounting pressure? He may end up resigning. Uh, indications from his defense team seem to be he's going to see it through. What are you hearing? I mean, look, I, I don't have any inside information in that. And, you know, when you talk to people, it seems like Cuomo has a has had a mentality throughout the entire episode that he can stick it out, and you know he's had a mentality that if he fights, he'll 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 um, you know he'll be able to to basically outlast uh, everything that's coming his way. And to his credit, <laughs> that has been the case uh, up until maybe the past few weeks. 
um, in that way, he sort of shares a little bit with the former president, with Trump, who many people thought any time he hit a road, road bump or a scandal, that was the end of him. But he kept he kept going, and in that way, the, the two men share a lot of a lot in common. Now, whether he'll persist even in the case of an impeachment, which would be, of course, uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if a New York governor has ever been impeached, but it may be historic, right? And so maybe a new a new kind of barrier that he has to jump over. Maybe he's not unwilling to do it, but we'll see. He's like a dog with a bone. I mean, <laughs> you know, he's just not letting go. Uh, and it, I, I think clearly at this point, it seems to be time for him to to step aside. Do you think if he did step aside that this would sort of uh, make a lot of these charges or, you know, make this sort of process go away? I mean, I, ideally, you know, a, a crim, you know, when a crime has been committed and when a criminal complaint has been filed, politics shouldn't really play any role in it, right? Like if, if um, the the victim in, or the suspected victim in question wanted to file a criminal complaint, the sheriff should be reviewing it uh, impartial of politics and as well as the prosecutor and the, the local DA. I don't think that if he steps aside that it should eliminate the criminal complaint. Um, given that they thought it, it was valid and had merit. Uh, unfortunately, politics does often play a role in these things. But, you know, I, I think, I honestly think it's sort of refreshing to have the legal system actually review something like this, uh, rather than it simply being thrown out into the court of public opinion, because court of public opinion is often unfair, it's not thorough, um, and we do have systems to investigate things like this. Of course, these sort of cases are very hard to investigate at times, uh, but it also it sends a positive signal if even a, the most powerful person in the state can be subject to them just as anyone else would be so yeah and what's so remarkable uh, about Cuomo's behavior to me and maybe I'm being na naive in this is that is how recent we're talking about you know you know there was a me too movement that 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 I I don't think Cuomo missed I think he he actually exploited it uh, you know uh, you know quite quite effectively you know in 2017 20, 2018 he even created uh, his own political party that he called the Women's Equality Party, which he then, you know, had nominate him uh, and, and, and ran on that ticket and, and fused it with the with the Democratic Party. But so, you know, he has said that this is all a cultural, you know, he's a cultural relic that, you know, that, that times have changed. But, you know, he hasn't really changed. He's not a he's not a bad guy. He's just a guy living in a in a in, in a former time. But what is so remarkable is that he he barreled right through the Me Too movement, and this alleg this criminal allegation is it's from very recently. Um, Zed, do you think that this uh, re rep represents the the norm that that a lot of men have s said that they you know uh, have internalized and absorbed the lessons of the Me Too movement, but in fact in private just have continued carrying on like this? And I, don't, I, I you know Zed, Zed would have actually less insight than my, my two co-hosts here. I'd be curious for their take too. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's interesting. I think a lot of civil liberties advocates don't like Cuomo um, because of what he did over the past few years in terms of, like, uh, campus due process issues and things like that. And, you know, I have no special insight into that because I haven't followed the issue very closely in, within New York itself. But I do know it caused a lot of controversy. So at the very least, it does present uh, a possible case of hypocrisy. You know, Cuomo is very aggressive when it comes to dealing with other people's perceived misdeeds or alleged misdeeds. Uh, well, at the same time, acting as he as if he's above the standards that he sets for other people. Uh, that's not just a male thing. That's a, that's a, that's a, someone who's very powerful thing um, that you could possibly see across the board. Um, but it does present itself in a gendered way in this context because Cuomo would make remarks uh, such as, "Oh, you know, men are out there doing this, and you know, I'm the champion for women," and blah blah blah. And at the same time, he does this. But I'd, I'd also be interested in seeing what what uh, everyone else on the set has to say about this. Well, I think I think the, it's really oh, I think ahead, it's really Ken. interesting that um, you know th that Democrats are now kind of finally saying, okay, we do have to address the Me Too movement with some of our own um, and some of the allegations. I mean, obviously with Biden, they buried a lot of the allegations against Joe Biden, and they did kind of give some token people, right? They said, okay, you can have Al Franken, I guess, and I guess you could have uh, Harvey Weinstein, but because the allegations against him were just way too severe to ignore. But, um, you know, I think that a lot of the reason why Cuomo has escaped a lot of the Me Too movement and why Biden certainly has is for those, you know, he was somebody who was potentially going to be a presidential front runner and, you know, somebody who could have potentially been at the top of a ticket someday. And so that I think 
I think now Democrats are going to have to sort of have a bit more of a reckoning when it comes to this sort of thing to understand that it's not just Republicans who do these sorts of things, but it's Democrats also. It's just uh, that it shouldn't be political really at all. So it is really interesting. Well, and I think if the last, call it 30 years of American politics has taught us anything, it's that men in power abusing that power and harassing and engaging in misconduct toward women is party agnostic. We've seen it on the right, we've seen it on the, the left. And I hope, as I thought I was the case from the Me Too movement, but that this latest scandal will spell an end of that. Oh, one quick update from the control room. Uh, William Salzer, a corrupt Tammany Hall governor, was actually impeached in, in 1913. I can't imagine how corrupt a Tammany governor would have to be for Tammany to be like, okay, wow, that, that's, a, that's a bit too much. This person's got to go. Made, made way eventually for uh, New York Governor FDR, and uh, here we are. Well, Zed, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate Thank having you. you and your insights. So uh, we will have more rising coming up after this.